everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be looking at uh, preparation of salt or salt preparations. So um, this more of a, uh, we'll be discussing about more of the things that we are able to do in the lab. Okay. So all the procedures that we are uh, doing to prepare these salts, we would, you know, just write it down theoretically and you know, uh, you guys need to learn that. All right. So let's move on. So by the end of this video, you'll understand that uh, there are two types of salts. Okay, mainly we'll speak about two types of salts and uh, they'll be soluble and insoluble salts. And then we will uh, learn how to, what, are, what, what kind of salts are soluble, what kind of salts are insoluble. We'll learn all about that. And also we will learn about how to prepare soluble salts, how to prepare insoluble salts, uh, all right? Okay, so types of salts. So there can only be two types of salts, okay? One type is soluble and the other is a non insoluble, okay? So basically the nodes that are here that you can see on your screen, these are nodes that I made, okay? So these are, so for example, you can see all group one salts. That means it could be a sodium salt, potassium salt, any group one salt and ammonium salts are soluble, okay? Similarly, all nitrate, sol nitrate salts. So nitrate means what? It could be uh, calcium nitrate, sodium nitrate, then magnesium nitrate, any nitrate salt are soluble. Then if you go to halides, okay? Halides means the group sevens. The group sevens, when they make salts, there are, you know, some are soluble, but uh, most of them are soluble, but except for certain uh, uh, exceptions. For example, you can see here on the screen, silver halides, mercury halides, and lead halides, which are insoluble salts. Then sulfate salts are soluble, but there are exceptions as for calcium sulfate, lead sulfate, barium sulfate, silver sulfate and strontium sulfate, which are insoluble uh, salts. The group one hydroxide salts are soluble. We said the group one salts are, are soluble. So that means hydroxide also, they should be soluble. And it goes on and on, okay? So these are, you can, you can refer to both of these charts, these nodes that I have given. These are very valuable because in most of the papers will be frequently asked these carbonates, chlorides, phosphates, halides, and all of them. So be familiar with it, it will be very, very uh, easy. All right, so let's move on. So we come to the first uh, preparation part, which we will be talking about the making of uh, soluble salts. How do we make soluble salts? Okay, so soluble salts, we can uh, dis, uh, distinguish into two parts, okay? Uh, first is uh, soluble salts, uh, the way we make soluble salts, except for salts of sodium, potassium, and ammonia. Because, you know, sodium and potassium, they are group one uh, elements. So that means they, the salts they form are also soluble. But the way we are able to obtain these soluble salts are different in comparison to other soluble salts, okay? So if you can see now, copper salt, okay? A copper sulfate is a soluble salt. Now, what do we do with copper salt? How, how are we able to uh, perform this particular? So this is a basically an experiment that you'll be doing in the laboratory. Uh, so if you are perform, you have to perform it in the following step, six steps that I have presented there. Okay, so first of all, what you should do, you should, uh, in order to get copper sulfate, we need a reaction. Okay, we need a reaction, a sensible reaction, which will uh, react and give us the desired product. So in this case, we have taken uh, copper oxide, reacting with sulfuric acid to give us uh, copper sulfate, which we are looking for. And uh, we get a byproduct as water, which we, we are not very interested about, but uh, you know, it just forms. Okay? So the first step is what? Measure an amount, a considerable amount of sulfuric acid and translate into a beaker. So that means you are taking your 
reactant first. You're preparing your reactant. So you get sulfuric acid first, then you get a in the second step, you get a spatula. Spatula is an equipment that we use to uh, gain if something used to grab certain uh, ele elements and they're in powdered form. It's like a spoon. Okay, but, uh, but, in, uh, but in the lab, we use the we refer it to be uh, rather than a spoon, we use we refer it to be a spatula. Okay. So we have the uh, two of the uh, uh, reactants, and then you place the uh, uh, you put the copper oxide into the beaker in which you have already transferred, in which you already have your sulfuric acid. Okay, you put it into the uh, now we have a beaker filled with copper oxide and uh, sulfuric acid. So, what do you do? You place it under a Bunsen burner. So, what happens actually in this beaker, this reaction has now started. Copper oxide and sulfuric acid has started to react. So why are we heating it? Why are we heating it? We're heating it because we do not care about the water that forms. We want the water that forms to, you know, we don't, we got, we got to get rid of the water. We don't want to. Okay. So that's why we're heating. Okay. That's why we're heating it under over a Bunsen burner. Okay. So we're heating it until you see, until the solution is saturated. Okay. That means it comes to a point, okay. Um, where this reaction happens, you now copper sulfate is formed, water is also formed, and you're heating it, and it comes to a point where you immediately see the copper sulfate crystals. Okay, because that's what we are looking forward for. We don't, we don't, we don't care about the others. We only don't care about the uh, copper sulfate salt. So once we get the salt, and once we see the crystals been appearing, what we do is we filter the mixture and obtain the crystals. And then we rinse it again. We rinse it again with ice water most probably, and then we dry it to get rid of the, maybe there are some more water in the small, you know, amounts of traces of water. So to, to get rid of those, all those traces of water, what we do is we um, dry it, okay? If we dry it using a, the most, you know, perfect way to do it is using a desiccator, but desiccator is like an equipment where you're able to it's like an oven, you are able to get rid of the water, but if you don't have the luxury of doing that, you can use a paper towel and just, you know, wipe out all the traces of moisture that is uh, on the crystals of copper sulfate. Okay, and then what you do is, then you will see at the end, you will see now copper sulfate is very, it has a very distinguished color, which is blue color. So you will see the blue color and uh, yeah, so that's the way you are able to uh, uh, gain the crystals or the salt, copper sulfate salt. All right. Now, uh, this entire process where we, uh, the last process where we're getting the crystals is called crystallization. So basically throughout this process, what we have done, we have done the uh, crystallization process. If you can remember when we did about, you know, separation of, uh, uh, separation techniques, we learned about crystallization. So uh, it's just a recap of what we do, what we did, what we learned in the, uh, in that lesson. All right. Moving forward, now we come to the next uh, type of soluble salts, which are the uh, how do we prepare sodium, potassium, and ammonium salts? Okay. So it's a bit different. Actually, now in the previous method, we used, we simply did what we did was we took the two reactants, we reacted, we let them react together when we heated it, and then we obtained the crystals. But here we do, we do a Bit of a different thing, we use a titration method. So, what we do is we initially we have take sodium hydroxide, okay. Uh, say we so in this case, what we have, what we the salt that we want, or what we are trying to obtain is sodium chloride. So, what we do is we uh, get, we have we get the reactant sodium hydroxide and HCl. So the sodium hydroxide, what do you do? You pip, you pip it out 25 centimeter cubes of so sodium hydroxide and you transfer it to a conical flask. You fill the bureau with HCl and then you start the type. You gain a value. You get a tighter value, you obtain a tighter value. Okay. And then what do we do? You get the tighter value. You know how much of HCl has gone and all the things you know. So in the conical flask, in the conical flask only, the sodium fluoride will be formed. But 
when sodium hydroxide and HCl reacts, not only sodium chloride is formed, water is also formed as a byproduct. Now, our concern is we don't care about the water. What we only need is the sodium chloride. We need the sodium chloride crystal. So, what do we do? We perform the crystallization. We again, we have to fill out the uh, mixture that is there, the resulting mixture that is there in the conical flask. Then we have to rinse it with water and then leave it to dry in a desiccator or um, using a paper towel. And you are able to get your uh, sodium chloride crystals. All right. So here we are actually using two processes. We are using the titration and then we are using crystallization. So you can see each and every time we are using crystallization uh, time to time. Because our intention, our aim is to get crystals, right? So that is the uh, whole point. So not very difficult, just you do need to remember the steps. Uh, and you know, you don't have to remember, you don't have to memorize, just think about it a bit and uh, you can use the question. All right, moving forward, the last part, which is making of the insoluble salts. So insoluble salts we refer to, so there are not much of insoluble salt we had in that table, but we have, we have some. So uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to, we're trying to react sodium uh, nitrate and sodium iodide. So what do we do? We do a particular, uh, in a into a test tube, okay? Uh, we add silver nitrate. Okay, silver nitrate, if you can see, it's always in the laboratories, it's always in a uh, brown color glass bottle or something like that, okay? And then uh, into the test tube, you add sodium iodide. Now, when this uh, silver nitrate and this sodium iodide, when it forms, when it reacts, it forms something called sodium, uh, silver iodide and a byproduct called sodium nitrate, which we are not interested because the salt we're interested in is it, the silver iodide. The silver iodide, in comparison to the other uh, uh, soluble salts, this salt that is formed, it produces, you can distinguishingly see. Why? Because it forms like a powder in the test tube. Now in the soluble salts, in order to get the, in, to, in order to visually see these salts, we have to crystallize. But here we, didn't have, we don't have to crystallize because the resulting salt that is formed is already in the powder form. So uh, the color of silver iodide is yellow color, so you will see a yellow color powder. You will see a yellow color powder formed and then we know, okay, this is the uh, silver iodide that is formed. All right. Now, when a powder like that forms, it, this is called precipitation. Okay. So basically, this silver iodide that has formed is a precipitate of this reaction. All right. So, so different things. So for example, if you reacted, uh, say, silver nitrate and sodium uh, bromide or something like that, you would get a green color if you reacted something else. So there are different diff distinguishing colors for each and everything. So uh, now if you reacted silver nitrate and sodium chloride, you will get a silver chloride, which is white in color. So from these colors, these are very you know prominent colors, very common colors that we are associating with halides. So we are able to get color and we say, uh, okay, a precipitate is formed and we know this is an insoluble salt. All right. So what we did in this video was we this was all you know what we did was all these practical you know uh, concepts that could be used in the lab laboratory. That's what we did. So we did all of that, and uh, we learned about how to uh, obtain soluble salts, for example, sodium, potassium, ammonium, and then soluble salts which are not part of that. And then we learned uh, different techniques. And then finally, we learned about making of the insoluble salts. Uh, so three techniques, right? So it, all the steps are clearly uh, shown in these slides. So uh, I hope you guys understood whatever we did. Okay. So I'll, uh, that's it for today. That's it for this video. I will uh, meet you in another video. All right. Thank you very much.